Ladies and gentlemen, federal employees, today I have an absolute treat for you. Today we're talking about the TSP and if there are better investment options elsewhere so you get better results for your retirement money. All the time, I hear the extremes. I, I hear people say, look, the TSP is perfect. I'm going to stay. I'm going to use it for the rest of my life. It's amazing. And I also hear, oh man, the TSP is a pain. I want to get out. I want to find something better. I, I hear both sides and we're going to talk through when it makes sense to leave, when it makes sense to stay, all that good jazz here today. Now, if you're new here, it is so good to have you. You are investing in your future and in yourself by being here. My name is Dallin Hawes. I'm a financial planner who serves federal employees all day long and I absolutely love it. So let's dive right in. And really, the TSP is phenomenal at doing a few things, okay? It's not so good at other things, but it's really good at a handful of things. Now, we have to, to understand when the TSP makes sense, when it doesn't make sense, we have to break your life into a couple of phases. Because number one, the goals that you have while you're working during your career are vastly different often than the goals you have for your retirement money when you're retired. So while you're working, really, the main goals is I want a place that I can simply and easily put money aside. It's simple, I get some tax benefits, and the, the investment quality and the things I can invest in are high quality, low fee, but just simple, simple to use and easy to put money away. And in that regard, the TSP is exceptional. The TSP is super simple, it's got some great investment options. It'd be nice if there were more, but honestly, the fact that there's few makes it simple. It makes it easy to make decisions on where to put your money, which in a lot of ways is really, really good. The, the investment options are low fee. And again, things come, your contributions come straight from your paychecks. It is easy to use and simple to use. If you want to use an IRA while you're working, it gets complicated. They have to start looking at your income. You can't always put money in and get a tax deduction on the traditional IRA side. The Roth IRA, there's, there's income limits as well. It gets complicated, but none of those things exist with the TSP. You could put money in the traditional TSP and the Roth TSP, no matter what your income is. It just goes straight out of your paychecks. It's simple and it's easy. So while you're working, honestly, until you're maxing out the TSP, I would not worry about investing anywhere else. The TSP is a phenomenal place to invest. Again, while you're working, that is going to be the best thing. Now, when you are retired, when you're moving into retirement, the goals change, okay? Instead of easily trying to put money in, we're trying to easily take money out in a simple, tax-efficient way. Also, we want to continue investing our money, but we want to, of course, get some other benefits like taxes and maybe supporting charity and some other things that we want to start using this money for. And of course, we want to make sure the money can be used for your retirement to reach your goals. So the goals and the things we're trying to do change in retirement. And so the TSP at doing these sort of things isn't as well equipped sometimes as let's say an IRA. Now let me talk you through some of the things that an IRA can do that the TSP struggles to do sometimes. Okay, let me talk you through it. Number one, you can't do Roth conversions in the TSP. If you haven't heard of Roth conversions, I've got other videos going through the details, but basically it's getting money from the traditional TSP over to a Roth account. And you can't do that within the TSP. You can't move it from traditional TSP to Roth TSP once the money is already there. It's simply something you can't do. You'd have to go to an IRA to make that happen. That's number one. Number two is if you want to initiate a transfer or a withdrawal from your TSP, you have to get spousal consent. Now, if you have a good marriage, everything's good. If you talk with each other about finances and how you're spending your money, honestly, this isn't a huge deal. It's just one example of some of the red tape and the hoops that they make you jump through when using the TSP. It gets a little more complicated where in an IRA, there's none of that stuff. It's quite simple to get money out, move it around. There's a lot more control on the IRA side. Um, number two, or number three, I'm in number three, when you pull money out of the TSP, you can't pick which investment funds to sell to take the money out of. And as a quick example, let's say you have 100 grand, half of which, let's say 50 grand, is in the G fund, the other 50 grand is in the C. Well, if you want to take 10 grand out, maybe you only want to take it from the G fund. Maybe the C fund is down, you don't want to take it when it's low. Well, you don't have that control, okay? I've got other videos on some workarounds on that in the TSP, but long story short, it's just more administrative work to take money out of the fund that you want. And in an IRA, you can choose exactly where the money comes from easier, okay? 
Next, when it comes to the TSP, you have less control on how much taxes to withhold from your withdrawals. Generally speaking, whenever you take money out of the TSP, they're going to withhold at least 20%. There's a couple exceptions to that, but generally speaking, as a general rule, they're going to withhold about 20% of that withdrawal, and you can always tell them to withhold more, right? That That's certainly something you can do, but you can't do less. And guess what? If you're, let's say, in the 12% tax bracket, but they're withholding 20, well, basically they're holding on to that 8%, and, to, and you're gonna get it back once you file your tax return, but they're gonna be holding on to it as an interest-free loan, and there's just less control. In an IRA, you can often choose exactly how much you want to withhold. Now, the TSP does 20, because it's often safe. Now, you may owe more than 20, it just depends on your tax bracket, but that is something to keep in mind as well. Number five, one thing you can't do in the TSP is what they call QCDs. If you haven't heard of those, I've got other videos on those. Long story short, it stands for Qualified Charitable Distribution. What those are all about is when you hit the age, when you have to start taking money out of these accounts, you're forced to, which is called RMDs, Required Minimum Distributions. Long story short, you're able to take those distributions or a piece of it, and if you send it to charity, you basically that income that would have you you pay taxes on otherwise from your rmds you don't have to pay taxes on at all basically it makes that income disappear for tax purposes and when it comes to getting the most bang for your buck and tax benefits and giving to charity at the same time there is almost no better way to do it than a qcd and in the tsp you can't do it it only happens in an ira so long story short long story short while you're working the TSP is super hard to beat. It's simple. I wouldn't look anywhere else until you're already max putting the max you possibly can into the TSP. If you then want to say more for retirement, no problem. Maybe think about an IRA or brokerage account or something like that. In retirement, there's a lot more reasons to go to an IRA. Some people still choose to stay in the TSP because again, it's simple. There's fewer options, so so fewer ways to make mistakes. But it's up to you on what you value, whether you value the simplicity but the fewer options of the tsp or you want more flexibility and sometimes the better results when it comes to taxes and other things because you just have more control over on the ira side but of course more room for error so those are the things to think about whether there are better investment options outside the tsp or not it really comes down to what stage of life you're in what your goals are and what things you want to do so i hope that's helpful if you have any questions yourself there's a link below to submit all your federal benefit questions and tsp questions we answer them all day long, and we, we base our future content on those questions submitted as well. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.